Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be doing a short little problem to test your technique. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 5 minutes, ideally 15, but not more than 45 minutes. If on the other hand you'd like to go along with us, just read the problem and put your first ideas out on paper for the next 2 minutes. So now, let's begin. So what the problem it really says is for each r and d that are in the integers, there exists an a that's congruent to r modulo d such that a, a plus d, all the way till a plus n d are all composite. And what this arbitrary long thing means is that for each n that's in the positive integers, that means that we can find an a that's congruent to r modulo d for each, actually for each r d n, we can find an a such that all of these numbers are composite. Now the idea here is that, do you know how to construct consecutive composite integers? Well, if you've seen other problems on this channel, you know that if you take n factorial, say n plus 2 factorial plus 2, actually let's make it n plus 1 factorial plus 2, n plus 1 factorial plus 3, all the way till n plus 1 factorial plus n plus 1. This is a sequence of n consecutive positive integers, all of which are composite, like this one's divisible by 2, this one by 3, this one by every one of them by i, this one by n plus 1. Now if you haven't solved this, take 5 minutes and try to apply this to our problem. And the application is actually quite quick. We need what? We need how many integers? We need starting from a, ending at a plus n d. This is how many n d positive integers consecutive. So if we just take n d consecutive positive integers, we can f maybe f force this to happen for some a, but we don't know what r is, so just to be on the safe side, we can take this n equaling to n times d plus 1. And now what we have, we will have that the integers 1 plus n, fact 1 plus n factorial plus 2 all the way till n plus 1 factorial plus n. How many integers do we have here? Well, here we have n times d plus 1 integers, correct. So now, how many of these integers are congruent to r modulo d for whatever r is? Actually, my bad, maybe we need to take n plus 1 here. Let's just take n plus 1 here and just be safe with it. And now we know that at least how many? We know that at least n plus 1, so we have n plus 1, d plus 1, I can't really do the math here. I think the answer is around this divisible, this divided by d, minus 1 perhaps at the most. Like we can at most subtract 1, I think. So here we, here we will have n integers, which are congruent to r modulo d, which are all composite. And so this solves our problem for each n. Well, maybe if, if we're looking at, say, n minus 1 times d, I mean, just add any constant here, say n, n plus 2, n plus 2, n plus 2, and you get more than or equal to n plus 1 positive integers, which are all composite and their congruence to r modulo d. And thus we can find our a. And the thing I just want to show with this problem is this idea of, you know, when you have these things, you know, like look at the bounds of what you need to be co composite. If the bounds are finite, you can always use this trick and maybe adjust this trick to fit the problem that you're working on. And as always, thanks for problem solving.